stage. It's great to see uh, so many new developers out there. We're really gonna move fast. All right, so uh, what am I doing up here? Um, so I, I want more people to help develop KiCad, and helping develop KiCad can mean a number of different things. That's what I'm gonna get in here. Um, and I think this is, you know, it's kind of obvious why that is good for, uh, for everybody, because, you know, we get more cool stuff in KiCad faster, we get fewer bugs. Uh, but what isn't always obvious is how you, as users, um, can actually become part of that process. So I want to take away some of the mystery, um, although I don't have all day, so there probably will still be some mystery. Uh, but most importantly, I want to convince you that this is something you can do. Uh, regardless of your software development skill set, there's still interesting things you can do if you're willing to do a little bit of learning and reading. Uh, you're not going to have to become a software engineer to still be able to contribute. So, you know, even if you don't program in C++ and you're not planning on learning, there's still things you can do, and I still want you to help. So, what am I not doing you here? Well, I'm not going to teach you C++. I mean, I only have 25 minutes or so. Uh, actually, I'm not going to teach you anything, um, because uh, I think the, the key here is to inspire uh, and to use these 25 minutes to just sort of walk you through some examples of things and point out that the development community of KiCad, meaning the people who write the code, the people who test the code, the people who report bugs on it, uh, is a really friendly place, and we want more people to be part of it in whatever way. Uh, so I'm also gonna have to skip over a lot of the details here, but I'm happy to uh, you know, have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, whether it's at KeyCon here, or whether it's by email later, uh, just to help answer any specific questions you might have. Okay, so I'm, I'm giving this talk because I wish I had seen something like it when I first got involved with KiCad. Uh, so I'm not a professional application developer. You know, my day job is designing circuits and writing some embedded code, which is a whole different world. Um, I put it in quotes, though, because, uh, you know, now I've been working on KiCad for a couple of years, so I guess I need to update my resume. Um, in the places I've worked, uh, there's a, you know, a common theme that we use expensive ECAD tools because you know, someone at some point decided we need to buy this tool because it has the capability we need to make the hardware we're trying to make. Uh, so I've been involved in a lot of comparison of these tools and evaluation and you know, people asking me which one we should buy with our many thousands of dollars. Uh, and because I've been using KiCad for hobby projects, it, you know, it's easy to start comparing KiCad as well, and sort of putting it in the same plane. Uh, and it might surprise you uh, how close KiCad is in some ways. Obviously, in other ways, we still have a long way to go. Um, so why did I start contributing? Well, I think there are things that I can do uh, to help get KiCad closer to something that is more accessible to more people who are trying to do more things. Um, because KiCad has some, you know, really clear advantages over all of these other commercial tools. Um, of course, it's free, and that means it's, it's accessible to everyone, every budget, and also it's, you know, accessible to people on different computer architectures, like a lot of the big players only support one or two different platforms. Um, but also, the company isn't going to go out of business or decide to move the software into the cloud or make it so that you can't download old versions anymore. Um, but a really important point is that we can help to shape it. I don't know if any of you have ever tried to ask a commercial ECAD vendor to add a feature or fix a bug that's been hanging out. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't usually go very well. So, why should you, out in the audience, uh, KiCad users who maybe can write software and maybe can't, why should you get involved? Well, the obvious thing is you can help the project move faster. You know, everyone likes to see New KiCad versions come down with more features and different, I mean, fewer bugs. Um, the more people we have helping, the faster we can do that. Um, and you can see, you know, we're, we're on a little bit of an upward trajectory over, over time in terms of how many people are committing how much code. Um, but we can, we can move even faster than that. Um, and maybe there's something about KiCad, you know, a low priority bug or a feature that matters to you but doesn't seem to matter to any of the core development team and it just isn't getting attention because there's a lot else going on. So by getting involved, you can advance your own agenda. You know, when I made this slide, there were 728 
low priority and wish list bugs open. That's a lot of opportunities to get involved. I doubt that the current team is going to get to all of them before the next release. But if the team grows, maybe we'll get to more of them. And obviously, if you, if you actually dive into the code, it's a great way to get better at programming and software development, which are two different things. You know, uh, not only will you get into the code base of KiCad, which has some interesting problems and interesting uh, algorithms to look through, but you also get to be part of the community and learn how to work as a development team and pass things off for feedback between each other, and it's generally nice. And for me, at least, it really feels good to be part of making a tool that helps other people and to know that people appreciate having this tool. I, you know, I just really quickly pulled out a couple of these, but ever since I've been paying attention to the KiCad project, I've seen, whether it's on the developer list or the user forums or other places, people just obviously benefiting from the work that we as the development team do. And I think that's very motivational. So if you want to get involved, what are you going to need to know how to do? Well, there's a couple things that probably are like the, the, the first targets for you. If you don't know them, you should try to pick them up. Um, one of them is Git. If you don't already know about Git, you should really learn, especially if you're not going to try to get involved with development, or e rather even if you're not going to get involved, because it's a really great way to manage your uh, ECAD design projects. Uh, you know, you can keep it uh, history and get back to old versions. Um, but obviously, we also use it to manage all of the code for KiCad. The next thing is, you know, navigating the command line or terminal. It doesn't really matter what OS you're using. Um, having some basic knowledge of how to run commands in a command line on that OS is going to be useful, not only for a KiCad development, but many other parts of life. You know, it comes in handy. Um, and the last thing is reading. You know, software development usually involves reading a lot of different instructions and reference material. Uh, so the only way to learn and get better is to be willing to read and study. And it's a skill. It's a skill that you have to be developing along with your other skills. No one starts out knowing exactly how to find the answers they want in any technical skill set. But, you know, figuring out where to find the answers, whether it's a generic programming question or a specific KiCad question, is going to help you be more effective over time. Um, and then there's a lot of things that you don't actually need to know at first, but you'll definitely pick up along the way if you get into this. Like using a debugger. You know, if you don't know how to use that, uh, you can learn, even if you're not going to learn how to program, and that'll let you make better bug reports. Um, you know, things like CMake, our build system, uh, you kind of have to deal with it if you're, if you're going to add code. Um, you don't have to like it. Um, and of course, uh, C++ and all of the fun and uh, bug-free libraries we use to, uh, to develop things. Um, and last but not least, the, the actual KiCad code base. You know, the, the project has been around for a really long time. It's had a lot of different hands in it. It's a complicated code base. You don't just open it up and immediately know what's going on and know, you know which, which files to open. Uh, so it's, it's a learning process, and you should expect to feel overwhelmed at first. That's fine. So what does the development process actually look like? Um, from a high level, you know, today we use a platform called Launchpad uh, that has the main code repository and also our issue tracker that we use for bug reports and feature requests. Um, we also have a presence on GitHub that we use for everything else that we keep track of, meaning like the documentation, the libraries, the website, and so on. Now, will we always be using two different platforms for uh, keeping track of these things? Probably not. Well, that's what we have today, so that's what I'm putting in the slide today. Um, I know it might seem a little bit nonsensical. Um, so we have a mailing list on Launchpad, and that's the primary way that uh, the developers talk to each other and people talk to the developers, and new code makes its way into KiCad. You can also attach uh, you know, code patches to Launchpad issues if they're you know, directly related to fixing a particular bug. Um, but the mailing list is a great place to basically uh, figure out what the community is like in terms of uh, developing things. Um, and if you want to find all of these things, uh, the, the website here has a more extensive list of all of these places and links, so you can look that up later uh, to, if you want to figure out what I'm talking about. So if this interests you at all, you know, sign up for a Launchpad account if you don't have one already. Join the developer's mailing list. You don't have to be a developer to join the mailing list. Uh, you can lurk on it and just get a feel for how things work. 
So, you know, let's say you do that. Uh, you know, you, you know enough C++ to be dangerous. Uh, you, you read the uh, compiling document and you got KiCad building on your local machine. So what next? Well, first you have to find something to work on and I recommend starting small just to get familiar with the process. Larger features can take a while to get through review. Uh, people ha might have more opinions on it. There might be more nuances of, you know, the KiCad way of doing things. Uh, so even if you're an experienced software developer and it's not about, you know, whether or not your code is good, I recommend starting with something small just so that you can get a feel for the KiCad specifics and, you know, get, get introduced to the community, start to, you know, have some conversations and that sort of sets up the relationship for you to later be able to add larger things. Um, you know, we have some bugs tagged as starter and launchpad. That's often a good place to look for uh, people who want to get involved. Um, you know, starter, what we try to make that mean is that we think that people who don't have a lot of involvement with the project will have less friction to take on that bug than they might have on others that require, you know, a lot more knowledge that you only build up over time. It doesn't necessarily mean that a bug is an uh, easy programming problem or a hard programming problem. Um, so you might have to filter a little bit for whether or not you want to take it on. Um, KiCad has its own particular quirks, as all projects do. Uh, so there, you know, there are things that we do in terms of workflow and etiquette, like uh, code style. Everyone loves code style. Uh, we have our own, uh, but now it's uh, pretty easy to follow that because there's a cling tidy script, so you don't have to go read the manual and then submit your patch, and then someone tells you that you don't have enough spaces and submit your patch again. Um, we also have a, you know, a standard commit message when we're fixing launchpad issues, and there's also a nice script for that. Um, and when we are receiving patches, we want to, we want to get the output of uh, the format patch command because that uh, includes uh, your authorship information and we want you to get credit for your work. Um, and so say so you've gone through all that, you have your patch tested and it looks good, so you just send it to the list for review. And you can add a, you know, a tag that says, oh, this is a patch and this is what I'm trying to do. And that'll start a conversation and you know, depending on the content of the patch, Maybe uh, you know, someone will review it quickly and say, yep, that looks good. It's merged, thanks for your contribution. Or sometimes uh, you know, there might be things where you're, uh, you're changing behavior and there might be more discussion or maybe someone finds that on a different platform your, your patch doesn't work as expected. So when you send a patch, you should be prepared to get involved in a conversation and you know, hopefully a constructive and positive conversation, but sometimes there needs to be some back and forth uh, just as you get familiar with the particulars of KiCad. Um, so, you know, follow that along and, and follow up on it. And uh, also keep in mind, everyone who is working on reviewing your patches and merging them is a volunteer, and they're probably doing a bunch of other things too. So sometimes it takes a while, uh, especially, you know, right now, if someone sends a patch, like I think a lot of people who might review them are right here. So... You know, it might, might be a little delay, so just be a little patient, but not too patient, you know, if someone forgets about it, you know, it's, it's fine to ping after a couple of weeks or something like that. So what if you don't know C++? First of all, that's fine. I still want you here. You can still help out. You can still be part of the development effort in a way that you might not have been before. You know, here are some examples of how. First of all, you can figure out how to build from source on your particular platform. Uh, you know, maybe you're one of these people who likes to be on the bleeding edge, and so you've been using the nightly builds to test out new features. There's a couple of ways in which being able to build from source is a little bit better than using nightly builds. Uh, first of all, it lets you test patches that haven't been merged in yet. So as you are lurking on the developer mailing list, you can see when someone proposes a patch. And even if you're not on the core development team, you can download that patch and try it out. And then you can uh, you know, speak up if you notice that on your particular setup, uh, you found an issue with the patch. Uh, you can also build from branches that haven't been merged into master yet for long running features that take a while to develop. And you can learn how to use a debugger to give better bug reports. You can use a debugger even if you don't know how to program. Uh, it still will help us move faster because it lets you put more information in the bug report and the more information we have, the easier it is to find a problem. Um, there's also some other things like uh, there's a neat git command called bisect that lets you find out when a behavior changed. 
Uh, so you can, uh, you can go back through the log and say, okay, this thing was working at this date, and now it's not working. And you can actually go back and uh, put a little bit of time into compiling over and over again and land on exactly which commit broke that behavior or changed it, um, which is really valuable. You know, if you can make a bug report and say, you know, this commit right here introduced this problem, then the developer who might fix it doesn't have to spend any time figuring out what the problem is. They already know exactly where to look, and that helps us move faster. Um, and I know, you know, there's a... Uh, there's uh, some uh, features coming, like I know Tom is maybe working on a crash reporter that might make the, uh, the debugger thing a little bit obsolete, but I think uh, it's still good to know. Uh, there's still, still some reasons why you might want to know it. And last but uh, definitely not least, you can improve our documentation. Both the user manuals and the uh, documentation targeted towards developers, which sometimes gets a little bit less love than it should. Um, you know, maybe you go and after this talk you're inspired and you go try out the uh, instructions for compiling, and you find that it didn't really work the way that we said it should. Um, it might not be your fault, so engage with us. You know, try to get help. Find out maybe we have a problem in our documentation. Maybe it used to work, and then something changed. That definitely happens. Um, but the only way that we can move quickly is if more people are helping and more people are, are uh, contributing. So now I'm going to uh, do the, the scary part, which is the live demo. I'm going to show a few things that I've talked about. So uh, but, uh, just an introduction on this demo. I'm going to show you on a Linux system. I develop and test on Linux, Mac, and Windows. Um, and I have to say, for quick development, Linux is still the nicest experience. Um, there's some technical reasons for that and some like reasons that people could put in time to fixing things. Um, but what I'm showing you translates to other platforms. You don't have to do this in Linux. Um, on the other hand, if you're a person who has only ever used Windows or only ever used Mac OS, I recommend uh, installing a Linux virtual machine. It's generally a good skill set to have in your pocket. Um, and in KiCad development, it lets you test two different platforms on one computer, which can be handy in figuring out if a bug is platform specific or not. So let's see how this works. Okay, great, you can see me, and I can kind of see me. Okay, so say you, uh, you figured out how to compile KiCad on your system. You've got master checked out, and you pulled down the latest things. You know, people have been throwing commits at it. Uh, no one knows what's going on. And you figure, I'm gonna test this out and see what happens. Uh, so you get it compiled, and you uh, open up the program and say, okay, I'm just gonna try to do some stuff that I normally do in KiCad and see what happens. Well, let's take a look at this net. Oh, uh-oh, looks like someone introduced a bug. So what you can do is launch it in a debugger instead. And I'm gonna use GDB here. And uh, just use a few simple commands here. And basically, uh, if you don't already know what this is doing, it basically lets you inspect the behavior of this program. And if something goes wrong with it, you can, uh, you can sort of inspect why it went wrong, get a little bit more information. So now I'm running on a debugger, I'm going to say, okay, last time I, uh, you know, I tried to highlight this net, and then when I here, and I click this net, and everything broke. And sure enough, everything broke, except this time, instead of the window going away, everything is just frozen. That's because if I go back and look at my debugger, it'll actually tell me I had a problem called a segmentation fault. And you don't really even have to know what that means at this point for this still to be useful for the development team. Uh, here's another command you might learn. Backtrace. Normally I just type BT, but for the sake of the demonstration. And uh, because I set my uh, text size really big, this looks really messy. But um, already, without learning anything about C++, you can take this and you can include it as an attachment to your bug report and the people who do know about C++ will be able to use that to pinpoint exactly what happened. But say you're interested in learning about C++, well, you can take this and uh, sort of look to see, uh, this is a, sort of a, a record of what was happening in the program at the time the crash happened. And this is also, by the way, a great way to sort of 
dive into the huge KiCad code base and learn about where the different files interact with each other. Um, because you can see, okay, uh, here's where the actual crash happened. And, you know, we were in this highlight net function, and here's the source file, and here's the line in that source file. And then if you uh, keep going down, you can see uh, what called that, and you can figure out sort of, you know, how does highlight net actually work? What, what are the different things involved there? Um, but if you really want to, you know, start diving into it, then you can go and look at your source file and uh, get down to what line was that? That was right here. Yeah, I can barely see what I'm doing down here. Um, oh, look, I've in introduced a fake bug for the sake of the presentation. Um, but, you know, and usually bugs aren't this easy to find and fix. Usually, uh, usually there's a little bit more thinking involved. But um, I just wanted to show you that, you know, you don't have to already know how to be a software developer uh, for this to be something worth getting into. Um, and if you're, if you're like me and started out, you know, mostly just doing hardware and doing schematic design, um, it might seem a little intimidating. You know, you've got you know, hundreds of C++ files and you don't know what's going on and WX widgets. Um, but you don't have to learn all that to get started. You can start small. You can start playing around. Um, you can start watching what other people submit and what other people commit. And, um, you know, take a look at a bug report and then take a look at the commit that fixed that bug report. And then you can go to sort of trace it back and work out the logic of, okay, you know, this is why it didn't work before and this is why the fix fixed it. Um, so obviously, this is like a whirlwind tour of, uh, of development and there's a lot of different things that I didn't cover here. But what I hope you take away is that we, the development team, are looking for contributions from everyone, uh, from every skill set, whether it's people who just are day-to-day -day users of KiCad and want to get their bugs fixed so that they can keep using it, or people who have a little free time and want to implement that feature that they've been dying for and no one's gotten to, or, you know, if you're actually uh, a skilled C++ software developer out there in the crowd and you're not already helping us out, you know, what are you waiting for? Um, so. Uh, I and you know, several of the development team are here at the conference and we want to talk to people who are interested in getting involved. You, know, you can find us, there's going to be a developer panel later and then uh, we'll be at the party. Um, and you can always uh, reach out to us. And, you know, I in particular, I like talking to people. I like helping them with their problems. You can find me on the forum. You can email me. Um, so I hope that you take away that you know, even if you're not a programmer, there are things that you might start doing that you didn't do before to help the development process move faster.